All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying the conference. I'm, uh, you know, we've been getting great feedback about the quality of the, of the sessions, and so that's that's what the conference is is, is about. So that's I've been great to hear. Um, <laughs> if you've been checking our, our hashtag, you're seeing people pop up wearing something tropical, and so those are the people who are putting themselves in the running to win free registration for for next year. So we love. <laughs> seeing that. So use hashtag IE Google Camp and, uh, you know, tag yourself uh, wearing something tropical today and telling us something about what you're learning uh, at Google Camp. All right. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce our lunchtime speakers today um, and really getting your money's worth because they're coming in a, in a, in a group for no extra no extra charge, so that's that's awesome. So you know, we have Sue Thoughts, Tori Wadlington, Jennifer Dean, and Leticia Citizen uh, representing um, a, a group. They've got other members, but they're representing Equity in Action CA. And this group consists of Southern California educators, um, uh, uh, um, and as educators who value learning from the experience and ideas of diverse voices. They recognize the importance of creating spaces that encourage people of color to feel welcome at ed tech conferences. By putting equity at the heart of learning, they strive to build an inclusive environment for educators. Their mission is to support organizations in curating data to see who is in the room, share ideas and strategies to design welcoming spaces for attendees, and to build a network uh, of people of color to attend, share, and present in these spaces. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and over to um, Sue and Leticia and Tori. And I think Jennifer is there in the in attendance as well. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Leticia, would you mind um, starting off by helping folks jump into the Nearpod and then we'll get started. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to see you today. Um, I have placed a link to our Nearpod, so this makes it a lot easier for you to just go ahead and click on that link. Um, it will take you to our current presentation. Um, and as soon as you do so, it will ask you to place, uh, to type your name. Go ahead and type your name. And then just sit back and watch the slides move. For those of you who are new to Nearpod, um, there will be some times that we're asking um, for audience participation. So please, if you feel comfortable enough to go ahead and answer in those responses. Um, hey, Leticia, can you share that Nearpod link one more time, but make sure that it's to all panelists and attendees so that yeah. everybody can see it? Yep. And that, thank you, sorry. No <laughs> it was just a panelist, we all already got in, right? But everybody else needs to get in as well. Sorry, no. continue. Yeah, my thing says all panelists and attendees. So. Hopefully you got there. Okay. So once again, go ahead and click on the link. It will take you to our presentation. Um, type your name and then go ahead and click join session and you should see the first page. So we already have 83 people who are in there. It's amazing. No, that was my fault. I was just reading it wrong. <laughs> you can see, you can see we all make mistakes, right? Um, so if everybody is in, you can also see, um, we will, Leticia will periodically put that link in there and um, just to make sure that folks who are coming in and joining us will be able to have that link. If for some reason, you know, you're not interested in joining the AirPod, we, you can just sit back and also watch us, you know, talk. Um, this just has some interactive elements today that we would like you to participate in as, um, as we move through some of, of this work. So, um, Again, um, we are the, the Common Sense, I'm sorry, I'm from Common Sense, um, but we are a, a little bit of force to have it here, right? We are the Equity in Action California group, and I just wanted to share um, an inspirational piece that some of us have been reading for the last um, couple of, for the last little bit. And as I read this, I want you to, in the chat or, you know, just in your own mind, I want you to think about which of these statements resonates with you. And then we will, um, we will kick off. So I think of this as like the prologue, right? The, 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 the opening for, for what we're doing today. So I'm gonna say um, diversity asks who's in the room, equity responds, who's trying to get in the room but can't, whose presence in the room is under constant threat of erasure. Inclusion asks, 
has everyone's ideas been heard? Justice responds, whose ideas won't be taken as seriously because they aren't in the majority? Diversity asks, how many more of pick any minoritized identity group do we have this year than last? Equity responds, what conditions have we created that maintain certain groups as the perpetual majority here? Inclusion asks, is this environment safe for everyone to feel like they belong? Justice challenges whose safety is being sacrificed and minimized to allow others to be comfortable maintaining dehumanizing views. So this comes from Dr. D.L. Stewart. Um, we have linked their Twitter um, handle on, in, that, um, in that page right there. And so if you are interested in following Dr. Stewart and learning more about their views, um, I recommend it. This is um, a piece that, that really struck us as very inspiring as a group. Um, and so, you know, I just wanna sh share, you know, as a group, um, you will see, you know, there are six of us and um, we are um, representative of, of many different educators across here and here, here in Southern California. And what we've been trying to do for the last year is one of the pieces that we're going to share with you today, um, as well as where our future is and where we're going. So in this group, we have Dr. Tatul Natoya, Jennifer Dean, Nairi Clark. Um, those three aren't, aren't able to be on this chat part right now, but Leticia Citizen is here. Give her, she gets a wave. Tori Wadlington, my, uh, <laughs> my partner in, our, in the last couple of sessions for Google Camp, and myself. My name is Sue Thoughts. Um, Tori and Leticia, do you want to say something about yourselves real quick? Thank Leticia. you, Tori. <laughs> um, so I'm Leticia Citizen. I am an I-4 coach um, in Beverly Hills Unified School District. And um, this is, I'm starting my 21st year of teaching. Hey, Tori. Tori. <laughs> I'm Tori Watlington. I'm a special education teacher for the Marietta Valley Unified School District. I uh, primarily work with students who experience emotional trauma or behavioral disorders, and I'm also part of the Equity in Action CA team so that I can help kind of bridge the gap for all students and make everything accessible to everybody so every student has, you know, the means to be successful at school. And that's all. All right. So part of our mission as a group um, is to support learning spaces um, to diversify who is included in that group. Uh, that includes mostly co conferences. We've been working with a lot of Q affiliates here in Southern California. And we try to share ideas and strategies to design welcoming spaces for inclusion. And then we also are trying to build a network of Black and Indigenous persons of color to attend, share, and present in these spaces. And what I mean by, you know, these, these pieces here is um, we have been um, spending the last year really trying to take a look at who is present in a lot of these conferences that we attend, ed tech conferences across Southern California. The way that we do this is we've been physically going, before when we used to go to conferences together, you know, in, uh, in real life, we would go into these conferences and we'd set up a table next to registration and we would ask people to share their identities on a post-it note and add it to a wall. And um, we, you know, literally asking the question, who's in the room? How many more of this group do we have this year than last? And um, we would share that data back with the people who were organizing that conference. And you can see, I have a link in here um, on the slides. Um, and the slides are also found in the, um, on the SCED. They're also linked on the SCED if you're interested in seeing where we went last year, over the last year, what kind of data we've collected, all of the content, you know, who was present in those spaces. And you can see you know, the kinds of folks that are showing up at ed tech conferences. So um, the next slide will actually take them to oh. that demo. There we go. So if you wanted to see where it is that we've gone so far and you know what we've been doing over the last year, boom, it's all right there. And you're welcome to jump out and take a look at some of that data. Tori and Leticia, you got anything you wanna share about that experience? No, it was horrible, wasn't it? Why did no. we do <laughs> no, 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 okay, <laughs> we'll share. Um, Again, in, in our season of our lives when we could go face to face, um, it was really empowering. Um, I think more so that once we did gather the data and type it all up to get these word clouds 
um, it was really, really glaring and telling about who really was um, in, in our spaces at that time, at that moment. Um, and then not only recognizing like, okay, who's here, who's missing, but then trying to dig deep into like, how can we make sure that when we diversify it more, we bring in more of those voices, we bring in more identities. Um, and um, I think the other thing that's been um, really fulfilling, like doing this um, passion project is that um, working closely with the Q affiliates um, who are in charge of creating these conferences or manning these conferences and then um, sitting down and having those um, intentional conversations about um, our spaces and how do we not only include people, but how do we make them welcoming? Um, so that's been quite a journey um, in helping us as we move forward. And then also realizing like this was just the start and we didn't even realize where we were going or, or we still don't know like what it will look like, but we know now like it's really transformed in just a year. We started this last August and, and just in that um, year's time, well, we haven't even reached a year yet, just um, how we've modified and grown in, in spreading out what we're doing. I think that's good, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so the question of where we're going, um, you know, we've been, we've been collecting this data, we've been doing it in this, try, trying to be very interactive about the way we do it and asking folks to look at themselves and look at their own identities. But, um, and then bring that in, and collaborate with these conferences and say, how do we make this space more diverse? But now we've kind of moved on to the question of how do we share ideas and strategies to design welcoming spaces to make them feel more inclusive? It's not enough just to get people to show up, but how do we make them feel welcome, right? Has everyone here been heard? Is the environment safe for everyone to feel like they belong? Because even if you get folks of color to show up at your conferences or in your, in your learning spaces, how do you make sure that they come back? How do you make sure that they feel like they're part of, of your sessions and, um, and want to participate and want to contribute? So um, when it comes to, um, to thinking about that, we've been asking the question, uh, and we'd like to ask you all to stop for a moment and consider a time when you felt unwelcome in a new space. So that means, you know, maybe it's a time when you were going to a conference for the first time. Maybe it was the first time you started your, you know, your teaching position. Maybe it was, you know, going to a party. Maybe it was, you know, some place where you were brand new to a situation and you didn't know anybody yet, right? How did you feel? Well, how did you feel unwelcome in that new space? And now is time when we're going to ask you to participate. And we want you to think about, um, so this, this is interactive, right? Leticia, you got this? Go to the next slide, yes. Go to the ah, next slide. We're gonna ask you, before entering that new space, what do you have to personally consider before entering? So we ask you for a response here, right? Um, and so you are, uh, so we're on student view. So that's the question. The question is, um, the question oh. is, is it not showing up? No, so um, because we haven't started the activity because you only have one minute. Ah, oh, so the question again is- oh, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> yeah, so before, no, 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 you have to move it. Before okay. entering a new space, what do you have to personally consider before entering? So that will be your question. And once we start the activity, you will have one minute to respond. Sue or Tori, do you wanna add anything to that question? Um, I no. guess Oh, go ahead. Some people can't get into Nearpod still, though, in the chat. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, um, I keep like repeating, uh, but I'll repeat the question. And then also, when we do allow you to, um, to respond to this question, you will see the question at the top. So I just want to say that. Um, um, so we were making sure that we're getting all modalities. But so before entering a new space, what do you have to personally consider before entering? Okay. And then we do have some questions in the chat. Um, of course, you're welcome to put your answer in the chat instead of in the Nearpod. Right. And I'm going to sit here awkwardly for 40 seconds. Some of you might be befuddled by this question. 
Some of you may say, I only have 16, 60 seconds. Um, I'm just gonna say this, Tracy, um, you put in here that the link alone is not working, is asking for my name and code. If it's asking for a code, the co I'll put the code in the chat. And then you can try that and then put your name and join in. All right, time's up. Okay. So the next question that we have for you is what identities can you bring into this space and which of your identities do you get to leave at home? Do you feel like you have to leave at home? And thank you all for sharing so far. This is our last question that we have for you right now. So which identities can you bring to the space? Which ones do you leave at home? So we got another 60 seconds to answer this question. We're ready to go. Mm. And thank you for those of you who are also sharing in the chat. Um, yeah, hope that you're that's perfect to be read. Yes. Steve, I didn't know you're from Compton. So am I. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you all for sharing this. Um, ah, there are some really amazing answers in here. Um, so definitely, we really appreciate you sharing. Um, I guess I wanted to take a moment to ask Tori and Leticia to share with us the answers that they have to some of these questions, right? And thinking about a time in which they felt unwelcome in a new space. Um, what, do you, what do you guys have to say about some of these questions and some of the responses that you might have shared to some of these? So Tori, I'm gonna ask you to start first. Okay. Um, I would say a time when I felt unwelcome in a new space was my first conference that I went to. Um, and even still sometimes to this day, I mean, I just got my credential like last week, really. <laughs> so I've been doing all this participation and all these different things as an intern teacher. And I often feel like being young and being a young African American male, like, is my voice going to be heard? Are my ideas going to be valuable to them? Or should I just kind of sit down and be quiet? You know, growing up, I've always been told, you know, some people may have heard this growing up, but stay out of grown folks' business. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel in these spaces. I'm kind of like, these teachers who've been teaching for years, these admin, they're, they're the grown folks here. And I need to just kind of sit here and be quiet and stay out of the business and just not say anything. But it's been hard for me to kind of learn and accept that, you know, my voice is valuable and there are things I can say that can help people. But it does make it awkward. And on top of that, like I said, being African American, there's not a lot of people that look like me there. You know, so on top of that, I'm kind of nervous if I'm the only one in the room, or if there's a handful of us there, I tend to kind of want to talk to them more and just kind of see where they're coming from and network that way. So yeah. I I'm just like you, Tori, in the sense that like Again, I've, this is my 21st year of teaching. And um, I remember my first year of teaching at my school and um, my CRT actually coming to me and asking me to share and present at our, just at our district PD. And um, it, we were probably like three months into school and um, one, I didn't really feel welcomed at my school. And part of that was not only because I felt like I'm just a youngin and I felt like there was some ageism going on, but then also like being a black and Mexican woman, um, I felt like that my voice wasn't really valued and what did I really have to share? And if, if I wasn't feeling 
um, if I wasn't felt, if I felt like I wasn't being heard at my school, why would like these teachers who are coming from, from our rather large district, why are they going to listen to me? And they're going to look at me like, what do you know? You just started teaching. Um, and so I actually, like, I agreed to do it because I kept praying and kept thinking like, okay, if I'm being asked, then that means that I'm, I need to be there. But I've shared with Tori and Sue before and with the rest of my team that like the day of, I called in sick and said that like, I couldn't do it just because like, I just felt so overwhelmed. Like even talking about it right now, just the feeling that I have is so overwhelming. Um, and I, I just didn't feel like that it was my place to be there. Um, and I never shared that with anyone either until we started doing this work. Um, and then to even say that like, again, because I've been doing this for so long as well, and I am sharing, there are times still to this day that like I'll go into a new space at a conference to present. And if it's a, um, if it's a, a city or like a Q affiliate that I'm not familiar with. And, and I do, when I enter into spaces, I look for people who look like me. I do the count. Um, I really do. I, in Tori, you and I have talked about this. Like we see who, uh, like how many of us are here. Um, and I'm lucky if, if I'm only one or, of one of two right um and then you don't want to go to that person and be like hey yo you were here but like <laughs> but like i felt like so uncomfortable at like a conference i believe a year or two ago and um i remember just going and i remember texting my husband and he had to like talk me into like nope just stay present you'll find someone don't worry and um, he was like, you've got this. Like it took him to keep, but I kept thinking like, why am I still feeling this way after so long? Um, and, and, you know, I made it through and yes, I ended up like talking to a couple people and it was, it was awesome and, and we made some connections, but, but I really was on the verge of just leaving and saying like, no, I, I don't, like it just was not a place for me, but I needed to change that to say like, why not me? Why can't, like, why should I stay here? Um, and the second question, Tori, I don't know how you feel about this. What identities can you bring to the space? What do you leave at home? Um, yeah, that, yeah, I leave a lot at home. Um, when I come to school to work or to these conferences, I generally just kind of, I don't know how to phrase it. Uh, I'm comfortable talking to people. I don't, you know, fake anything, but I'm not my complete and whole self with people. And so I like to joke around a lot. I'm a like huge hip hop enthusiast. So I'm nerdy. I like video games. I love all that stuff. But when I'm there, I try to stay as professional as possible so they don't think lesser of me. Or if I'm pulling in somewhere, I make sure, oh, let me turn down my music real low. I don't want the bass to draw attention to my car and people to be like, oh, look at that. And um, <laughs> keep <it going. laughs> and, uh, you know, in our equity and action meetings, him and I can wear our do rags openly in the meetings. You know, <laughs> you know, you guys are fine with it. But in the other meetings I've been on virtually, I had to make sure I take it off real quick and make my hair look somewhat presentable, so nobody has anything to say, or so I don't feel awkward being there. And so there's a lot of things I leave at home, especially if there's stuff going on in the black community that's um, well known to the world in the news, anything like that, I'll come to work and I'm just like ducking people the whole time. Cause I'm like, I don't want anyone to come to me and ask my opinion on this. I don't want people asking me for a history lesson on X, Y, and Z. Why is Kanye doing this? I'm like, I don't know him personally. And it's just like, I feel like when I come to school, we all, some people know, of the, you know, the words code switching. I feel like I have to turn on that. All right, I am teacher Tory here. I am the Tory that people need to feel comfortable around. I don't want to come off as too black and make them feel uncomfortable, even though it's like, that's who I am, you know? Right, because it almost makes it seem like you're going to lose credibility as an exactly. educator, right? Exactly. I still have my master's. I'm still on the board of IAQ. I still have all these other accolades, but I like to talk with slang because I can. It's, you know, it's cool with me. And I like to just talk really chill and nonchalant. I like to just kind of relax and make jokes and in my classroom sometimes, if it's just me, I may be playing rap music. And if so, if I hear someone coming through the door, I'm like rushing over to the volume thing to turn it down just so they don't like feel uncomfortable coming in. And it's just, it's exhausting. And even the way I dress sometimes, you know, some other teachers on campus may come in hoodies and shorts 
And it's like, I can't come in the hood. You can't street. do it. Right. For me, for me, for some reason, you know, I don't feel as comfortable. I feel like everyone's kind of like staring at me and, you know, they're like, oh, what's up, Tori? You're looking real cool today. You're looking real gangster today. And I'm just like, it's just a hoodie, man. It's cold. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to do anything. So there's a lot I have to leave at home that I wish I didn't because it makes being at work more exhaustive because I'm worrying about the kids and teaching because I love the kids. I love teaching, but I'm also worrying about upholding this image on top of that. And even down to the lunch, a funny story. I, uh, there was another African-American teacher there a few years back and he was eating fried chicken for lunch. And I came over there and he was just, and at the time it was just me and him on campus as a black teacher. And so he was like, Tori, you want some of this uh, chicken? And I was like, you know, we can't be the only two black people. <laughs> <laughs> even though I really wanted some, but it was just like the stigma that would have followed it. If somebody walked in, I was just like, I really do want this chicken, but I don't want to create any awkward situations or open doors for stereotypical jokes for people to kind of throw out and stuff. So it's just stuff like that. Whereas like if I wasn't African American, I could just carry fried chicken everywhere and nobody would say anything. So it's like small little microaggressions and small things like that that I have to consider like every day when I'm coming into work. No, oh, you're you're absolutely right about like you almost have to like check it. You know, you have to go to the ch coat check in, right? Mm -hmm. and be like, okay, let me hang this up. Um, maybe today I'll try it. Uh, no, um, and it, it's a struggle. And like you said, it's exhausting. Um, and so even you know that's that's especially with this whole remote learning, right? Now we have to open up our devices and we have to now let people into our homes. And it's like, but our home is supposed to be our safety net. Our home is supposed to be where we can let down our hair. As, as yesterday was mentioned, right? She said, like, take off the wig, take off the eyelashes, flick off the nails. Like, that's where you get to, 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 to be you um, with their family. And here's the other thing. Being you doesn't mean that we're not growing. We're not, like, staying in this place of, like, being hood or whatever that is, that whatever, you know, that you want to throw those labels on us. Like, we're so diverse and we're, and and we've got so much to offer but but we've learned even from home like i can't tell you the constant conversations that we had at home from my parents and and i like again i'm biracial so my dad is black and my mom is mexican and like hearing their conversations from them not only when something happened on the news but i had to deal with it when my cousins did something like I was always in trouble because of my cousins. And it was like, you're not gonna be that one. You're not gonna do this. We can't have people looking at this. But like that, that, that pressure of it and just, and now I watch when I do that with my own kids and we have those conversations. Um, it's a lot and it, and it hurts as a parent to then have to ask your kid to check things at the door. But like, you know, during, the election time where my daughter was going to a private Christian school and she was like one, maybe a handful. And, but in her class, she was the only um, black student, Mexican student that was there. But she was always so vocal about like, no, this is why you shouldn't, you know, agree with what's going on in the world. So much that like she was coming home every day and she was having these conversations with us that I had to finally say, I, I have to step in now. I have to pull my mom card and I, and I have to pull you back. And I had to say that too, and I had to say, because you're not with numbers. You don't have the numbers to support you right now. And you're gonna be exhausted before you even hit 18, kid. Like, it was one of those things where I'm like, sweet, there is bigger. And she was like, no, but this is my world right now. And this is what I need to do. Like, to pull her back was hurtful. It was hurtful as a parent. It was hurtful as a barbershop woman. It was a hurtful for someone who's like doing this work, but I had to explain to her about the numbers. And this is why, again, when I enter into these spaces, I'm looking for someone else who looks like me because I need numbers. I need to not only be able to relate, um, but I need someone there that like, if something goes down, <laughs> we got backup or like we got someone who, because I need someone who's also gonna empathize with me and be in that time. Um, I dealt with that, right? Going to like Ford's Theater, I went to um, a teacher institute with them very quickly. And like, there were two of us there. 
and because things were being said and we were sharing, then we got called into this special meeting with all the teachers and it was them telling us how they didn't like some of the things that we were saying and doing. And in that moment, we both looked at each other and it was like, we don't have numbers, but we stood up. Like we still had to say what we had to say. We we're still calling out people because at least with that one other, we were like, we got this. You know what? No, you need to hear this voice. You need to recognize how like you saying your students don't respect you goes two ways. Like you need to respect them. So Okay, we can go on and on, but we need to move on because we're running out of time. Sorry. I was going to say, Cynthia asked if we could do this class all day, and that is how I feel. That is how I feel all the time. It is, it is my honor and privilege to be able to listen to you guys and hear what you have to say and be honest. And like, this is my joy, right? This, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to hear people and, you know, to hear them share their truth and, and to hear them be honest. So I'm sorry to have to cut you off. Like, <laughs> we just... <laughs> we have one more thing here that I just wanted to do that I wanted to see, like, when it comes to some of these spaces, I want you all to help us think about this. How do we make sure, I'm going to advance my slide, how do we, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, I'm going to go back. Where's our next one? Hold on, here we go, here we go. The question is. I, I got it, I got it, I got it. You got it, you got it. I want to know how do we make solutions to this? right? How is it that we can find places and find ways to help? Let's go back to the one about, um, it's the one about the, the creating spaces. What do we do at our conferences? Did we lose that one? Did we lose that slide? It's okay. Um, Wait. It's the one. Oh uh, gosh, look at how passionate I was. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, which one? I know, I, I'm going to go this find one? it. Or is it before this? The one about where we're having folks come in. I'm gonna, sorry, sorry guys, I'm gonna take you on a roller coaster. It was about designing solutions. How do we make Leticia and Tori and everybody else who is in the minority feel like ah. we can? This is what I want. What do you want? How are we making people feel welcome? Especially in both our, our real learning spaces, right? And so I don't have to approve anybody, no. They were going to post. You guys, those who have felt unwelcome before in your spaces, tell us what could we have done to make you feel more welcome in our spaces? So don't just think about like, you know, what kind of solutions that we could make like as individuals, like, oh, Tori, welcome. It's so nice to see you here, right? Like I could come up and I could shake your hand and say, please come in, come and meet these folks. Like, oh, I think you're, you know, you're, I'm so happy to see you here. What could we do to design conferences, to design spaces that make people feel welcome. Think about, you know, answers like, you know, universal design, translation services. How do you design that space, right? How do you design seating? How do you design activities that bring people in and make them feel welcome and seen? And so some of these ways, I don't know if you guys have, what do you want, right? Like numbers, right? We want numbers. That's one thing. I thought about like topics of conversations that are related to ones that I feel deeply and strongly about, right? If, if I'm a, you know, if I'm coming to your session. I know we don't have a lot of time here, but yeah, a couple of pieces here. Oh, I love it. So if you have more ideas, we have to move on, but if you have more ideas about this, please, you know, tweet them out, share them with us because this is the kind of data that our group collects um, and this is the kind of content that we are here for so that we can share it back with our, our folks here, right? With the folks who are like Dennis, right? <laughs> who are organizing conferences. This is what we're all trying to work toward is, you know, tell us about what would make you feel welcome. All right, we're gonna move on. Yeah, Dennis, we got three minutes. All right, friends. Yeah, you're, you're good, keep rolling. Okay, I just saw your face and I got scared. Oh. <laughs> I, I have that effect, apparently. <laughs> thank thank so you. Like, hey, Sue, be quiet. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Nope. <laughs> so, you know, if you, we're going to move on from this, but if you have more ideas, please share them with us. Please tweet them at us. Um, the thing that I really wanted to also emphasize is being welcoming doesn't just include adult learning spaces and conferences, but this applies to your students, right? This applies to the kids who are in your classroom. And as Leticia said, these virtual classrooms that we have here make their worlds collide. They don't have a choice anymore necessarily about which identities they are bringing into your physical classroom and which ones they are leaving at home. 
seeing into their world, seeing my daughter's bedroom, seeing into all of our spaces makes us more vulnerable as people when we are on these conferences and when we are in your Zooms as, as students and as teachers. So being inclusive means inviting that whole self. I know you guys got something to say about this. Do you want to say something about it? Or do you want to just plow through here? But I feel like, yeah, let's go. Let's just okay. go. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I guess, you know, we tried to include a couple of ideas at the end of this presentation with ways that you can include the whole self and make people feel welcome. But the thing that I want to emphasize is ask yourself with every lesson that you make, every learning experience that you create for people, have everyone's ideas been heard? Is this environment safe? And does everyone feel like they belong? And if you don't know, you better ask. Right? If you don't know, try to find out. Ask those, ask those people in your space. Right? And so um, I think that there are plenty of people who, you know, are, who are designing the spaces who just don't know. Um, so we have a couple of suggestions here for different activities that you could do in your classroom. Here's my favorite right now. It's Jason Reynolds and the Library of Congress. And he uses these writing prompts to ask students about their personal experience, about their families, about their values. And I loved, you know, we did this, I've done this in a few sessions I've done lately. And this, if you don't know Jason Reynolds, he's the best. Um, but that is- in Wait, wait, do, oh, wait, yeah. do go back. Go back, go back. Yeah. There's, a, um, there's a second slide on this as well. Oh. Where we've also included these resources. Okay, show it to us. It's on the, um, it's on, it's on the screen. You can't see it right now. It's okay. Oh, oh okay. So it's the back to, back to school toolkit cool. and facing history. Um, the resources that common sense has also linked the where I'm from poem activity. And then also um, equity in action. We created a wakelet with resources that are broken down by um, books for students to read. And we actually broke them down by K-8, um, 912 adults, and then um, educators. Um, there are resources for you to attend webinars. We have recorded webinars. Um, there are some professional development things. There's um, lessons that you can actually use in your classroom. So please, 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 we have already sent the link um, to this presentation and the SCED. So it's there for you to access. Go ahead, you have all the slides. You have all the slides. You have all of the resources. They're all in the SCED. Um, of course, we also want your stories. We have a Flipgrid in there, in that SCED on the slides, share your stories about how you feel welcome and what would make you feel welcome if you wanna do that. And I think this is the last slide. Oh no. yeah, no, sorry, that's the flip grid. But those are, if you wanna visit and know more about us, we are at this website on the Equity in Action website that tells our whole story, it tells everything we do. And of course, we would love to hear from you, but that's the end of what we have today. We got carried away, we were so excited. All right, I'm one minute over, right? Thank you all for joining us today. We encourage yeah, you to thank join you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was just awesome, you guys. Uh, uh, so thought provoking and uh, 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 so brave and insightful and uh, just in, in inspiring. You know, we all we all have our blind spots, right? I, I, I know that I do. And one of the things I like that you guys were saying related to what. Laney was saying this morning about listening to your students. You know, it's a, it, it's important that uh, uh, people like in like in our, our our position here, if we're putting on a conference, we need to listen to the presenters and the, and the attendees and and our uh, intended audience, right? Um, so I did want to mention. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look into the Q and A, but someone did ask how do how can one become part of Equity in Action CA. And we are so, a very exclusive group. Um, <laughs> what I this is just six people hanging out and coming together and asking a question. And we did that action research that Dr. Sullivan was talking about yesterday. We formed an action research group. What focus, what question do you have? How do you get together with some folks and figure out what your issue is? And I would strongly encourage you to think about pairing with educators that are not necessarily the ones you talk to all the time and thinking about what problem you want to solve and how do you collect data? How do you make action on it? So that's what I would say. Awesome. Great. Uh, so uh, yeah, in the chat, 
so show some more love for Sue and, and, and Tori and Leticia. And uh, thank you guys very much. That was, that was wonderful. So you have your last session of Google Camp starts at 1.10. So go choose something that, that speaks to you. Um, we did want to remind people that uh, we get asked a lot, you know, uh, are we going to make the videos of the sessions that were recorded available? We will, and we will communicate that via email with all of you about uh, how and where you can get those. Um, <laughs> it won't be in the next few days, but it's coming. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Sorry, did I see that you said you have a podcast coming soon? Why? Uh, <laughs> put that in the chat. All right. Thank you, Google Camp. Yes, thank you. Thanks, team.